Now, as you all know, I am a critic of taste. So of course, I love Borba's comics. They provide me with flawless entertainment. So of course, I will read the sequel to I Will Survive. And this one's called, wait for it, Born to be Alive. <laughs> Unlike Judy's baby, am I right? Short novel created by him as my main inspiration to make Born to be Alive? Oh, so it's not even Borba's story? What? Somebody else made the, the novel and then they were just inspired to make this comic based on it? Ah, that kind of takes the pep out of my step. I hope the moods are calmer now and that this sequel won't be considered as controversial as I will survive. Honestly, can't tell if troll or not, because this one is significantly more laughable than I Will Survive was considered. But anyway, guys, let's get to reading. All right, we got Nick banging on the f fucking for you. Seriously, banging on the apartment. Judy, Judy, come on, open the door. I know you're home. And she got a shitload of locks, making me wonder what kind of neighborhood she's living in now. <laughs> and then creak, door opens up. Go away, Nick. It's 4 a.m. But she's looking creepy as hell, even with the super Disney eyes. If you're going to make such a fuss again, I'll have no choice but to arrest you for disorderly conduct. Wait a minute, is this the Seinfeld apartment? Is that all you have to say to me after a year? All right, so they've been split up for a year and he came back trying to make it work out between the two of them after making that whole fuss about their baby. Nick, move away from the door. No, I need to talk to you face to face. What's so important that made you come here at this time? Let me in and I'll tell you everything, Judy. But believe me, if I don't talk with you right now, I might not have another day to live. What? Oh man, plot twist, Nick has cancer. Comes in and is like, oh, it's dark in here. Turns on the light. Yeah, I guess it is kind of weird. Like if you're hearing someone knock on the door, you answer, you answer the door in the dark. You're not gonna turn on the light so you don't step on a Lego or some shit? Apartment looks the same, everything's in its place. Oh yeah, do they still have the picture of Bunny Jesus? I must be on duty at 8 a.m., so yeah, I know. This is the first time we've met in many months, yet you only think about your job. Listen, it was not me who resigned from the police force? Oh, because they broke up, he resigned from the police force? Man, that's just sad because it's like I, I can sort of understand that to some degree if you like it's so tough being around uh the person that you had such a long relationship with you feel as though you have to get out of any space with it but he could have he, he didn't have to resign necessarily he could have just like tried to transfer to a different police force unlike you i have my duties by the way is it the alcohol that made you come here to see me again? Oh, he's supposed to be drunk? Is that what this blush is on his face for? Oh, I thought like he was just supposed to be bashful or something. Our bitches. You gotta love Borba's uh, itty bitty details that they throw around. Oh look, there's a Wonder Woman bunny. <laughs> ah, I'm feeling better now, much better. Minutes ago, you said that your life was at stake. Well, did I say that? You lied to me. No, I only hustled you a bit. Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's so like the character. He's a, he's a hustler, get it? From the movie? I love how she seems more disappointed that he isn't going to die. So your old self is back, alive and well. Damn. Didn't I tell you, Fluff? I will always survive. Nick, you son of a... Oopsie. Haha, <laughs> it's like mistranslated. I, th this is a weird conversation. Er, by the by, by, by the by, did you do that? That? You mean my premeditated sin? Oh, they brought it back. Wow, oh my, did I really say such a thing? <laughs> Sorry for this nonsense, Judy. Yes, Nick. I did, and he looks really upset. <laughs> I, I forgive, 
I don't need your forgiveness. No, Judy, you got me wrong. I mean, forgive me. Forgive you? Let me explain. And he fucking grovels like a little bitch. I miss you, Judy. I miss you so much. Oh. Not only can Borba not remain consistent to the characters in the movie, but they can't even remain consistent to the characters in part one of this comic. Personalities are just flying all over the place. Nobody knows how they feel anymore. Nick, stop this and stand up. Judy, please hear me out. I did you wrong. I should have never left you. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I should have stayed by your side. You asked me to stay, but I refused to listen to you. I was proud enough to turn my back on you. Okay, I, I didn't really need to see this part. I was such a shameful coward. But believe me, Judy, I've learned my lesson and changed my ways. I'm begging you, Judy. Could you please forgive my past errors and many flaws? You can't write it in this text and expect me not, not to read it like that. What do you say? Will you do so and take me back? She's loving this. Oh, Nick, Nick. I didn't know if you foxes were so emotional. So condescending. See, this is giving me like ew vibes because if they're are times where you can read it in a story whenever a writer puts something in the story specifically because it like gets them off, you know? It's like they really enjoy the ability to create their own fantasies. And this kind of feels like that. This kind of feels like something that's like a fantasy for the writer so that like a, a guy will just like flip their politics completely and like cry and beg for you to take them back because you're just so, you're just so irresistible. They'll do anything for me. <laughs> Silly boys. Like, oh yeah, when a guy obeys you and follows everything that you say without question, that's true love. However, you walked out on me when I needed you the most. But, but, shh, it's my turn to talk. Yes, I do know that we both made many mistakes and bad choices. But you did the worst of them all by turning your back on me. You fucking hit him. You abused him, and it's right there in the flashback. This is actually a classic example of like abusers who push you away and then hate you for leaving. Judy, I, where were you when the procedure went wrong? You know how much I missed you by my side when I was going through such a dreadful time? So let me get this straight. You went forward with the procedure because that was your choice, and then the guy your boyfriend who told you not to go through the procedure, you blame him for your trauma. Yeah, that seems like a healthy response. Did you forget that you were as guilty of my pregnancy as me? If you really loved me, you would have been strong enough to stay with me. But you hit him. That's all I asked for, Nick. Your support. That that's different. Staying with someone and supporting them, two different things. You can stay with someone and be very unsupportive. <laughs> and even abusive. Oh, look at this. We get another zoom in on her area so that you can, so you can understand. Maybe everything would have been quite different if you had stayed by my side. Maybe I hadn't even. Did she just try to imply that she wouldn't have gone ahead with the abortion if he had stayed? Maybe I hadn't even. What? What? Anyway, all these things are in the past now. And yes, Nick, I forgive you for being such a shameful coward. Doesn't sound like forgiveness. <laughs> but it's too late for reconciliation. I'm sorry, Nick. It's time for you to go. And then Borba says, uh-oh, now things are getting hotter. Judy, please, I can't live without you. Nick, you're hurting me. Let me go, let me... Judy? Oh no. Dun dun dun! Are, are you KK? Nick? He help? Shay, I told you to stay in bed. <laughs> I can deal with Nick by myself. And then Nick just turns into Pac-Man over here. Shay, babe, Judy, who's this woman? And why is she in our bedroom? Oh no, no, no! You, you replaced me with another fox? A female fox? I think you'd better say, Vixen, how? 
sorry, I shouldn't be laughing, but come on. How come you? Many things happened while you were away, Nick. I was in despair, feeling totally miserable and alone. I could not count on the support of my family, not after everything I put them through when I became a police officer, and especially after the two of us started to live together without being married. Wait a minute, so I was right! La the last comic I was like, wait a minute, wouldn't Judy have had a more conservative upbringing? You know they're... What the fuck is that word? Herotholix? Keratholics? I'm guessing it's supposed to be a play on Catholic. You should have listened to Bunny Jesus, Judy. In the end, I stood up for myself and went ahead with the procedure. Of course, I kept my family unaware of what I was doing and what happened next. Once again, going back to the first comic, before she was, he was like, oh, why didn't you just go ahead and do it? Why did you tell me if you had already made up your mind? And she was like, because it was the right thing to tell you. And now she's like, yeah, I kept this whole thing totally secret from my family as the first rabbit to ever get an abortion. <laughs> first rabbit ever to get an abortion. She's the first everything. She's the first female rabbit police officer and the first one to get <laughs> Unfortunately, complications happened and I had to get help at the ZPD's hospital. And it was there when I first met Shannon. Why is she wearing overalls like she's four years old? She works as a garage mechanic and came to the hospital due to a minor injury. She's sweet and shy and like me, has gone through a stressful breakup. So now you can rebound together, cause that's true love. But that doesn't explain why you, things are not just black or white, Nick. There's a large gray area in between and Shay and I are well in the middle of it. So the, so she's bisexual now all of a sudden. And we were greatly surprised when our feelings started to change no, no, I've had enough. You're not like that, Judy. You're just fooling yourself. Please dump this lezzy and get back to your true self. Don't you dare call her that. Let her g go. L let her bug off. Who says that? <laughs> bug off. It's such a dated term. <laughs> Look at this dramatic fall. Ah, are you okay? Oh my, sorry. I didn't want Nick get out of my home now. Look how small she is on. Look at him too. He's just like so. I know that they're trying to like make her seem very like timid and submissive, but they make Nick look the exact same way. Very timid and submissive. He's like, please don't hit me again, Judy. Yeah, Nick, you came here out of the blue from outer space with a sad story and hoping I was all alone and free, didn't you? Jeez, she looks evil. Oh no, Nick, not I. I found me a new love with someone who respects me. With her, I got a new life to live, to start anew, cause I deserve to live a new life, Nick. I was born to be alive but not her baby. Judy, please, do yourself a favor and get out of my life forever! And she slams that door. She slams it so hard that it changes its shape. Pant, pant, oh, oh, oh sadness. Ju Judy, uh, are you uh, all r right? I would never be able to date someone with a speech impediment. It would drive me crazy. Oh yeah, that looks like a totally natural kiss between two species of animals. I'm better now, much better. That's right, ladies. You have a rough relationship with men. Just date women, then all your problems will go away. Women literally have no flaws. They're never wrong, never lie, and never aggressive. So that was born to be alive. I guess to some degree, I can kind of understand going through a bad breakup and then questioning your sexual orientation because of it. Uh, the, the first like really bad breakup I had, I thought I might've been asexual, which now I'm convinced isn't even real. But Judy just straight up rebounded to like the first person she saw afterwards and then decided that she was bi. And then they just had to like throw in there, oh yeah, Nick is also homophobic. <laughs> the first comic, it kind of seemed like it was up for debate whether or not it's the right thing 
for a woman to make the choice to have an abortion. And it seemed, to me at least, more so about how that argument can cause a lot of couples to break up. And I can understand that bit of the story. In this one, it seems like they say well, the right thing to do is to let the woman make her decision, but even if she makes the wrong decision, it's still the guy's fault. <laughs> because like she had the abortion, but she admits that it was a traumatizing experience. If only Nick had stayed with her. This shit's weird, man. And it does seem like some sort of power fantasy. It's like, oh yeah, uh, I'm such a wonderful, amazing, person, or bunny in this case. I am bunny Jesus. So of course, Nick will change his uh, politics completely and do anything to get back together with me. And I'm just so amazing, independent women that I'll have already found somebody else. So of course, this comic, work of art. Let me know what you thought about it down below in the comments section. And as usual, remember to like the video if you enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching and reading with me. I'll see you next time. Bye!